All right, hello everybody. This is Andrew Burkowski checking in again from the fish room. Today's video is going to be about all of my Scythia. Currently maintaining all of the described species of Scythia, including one that is undescribed. Right here we have the Scythia multipunctata. This is the Lago de Kamikwara location. One thing you definitely want to note about this species is that the black spotting is highly variable. This is actually the largest species of Scythia, with the others being much smaller. The Francese actually is about um, a little over half the size of a, a full-grown multipunctata. And I've long thought that these are one of the most beautiful of all the Gideon species. This is a great shot. Absolutely love it. <laughs> you can see a lot of these are still quite small. That's a nice spot on, on that male up top. You can see this large piece of moss. There are babies swimming around in there. There, let's see. There's one over here, hiding behind that pregnant female. Very cool. Another thing to note about these, um, and with all of my Scythia, is I actually keep them all ambient. My fish room is a little bit on the cool side. Alright, well, as much as I love these, we do have quite a few other fish to look at. Over here, this is another location of the multipunctata that I have. This is the Tongan Sikoro location. There's a pregnant female right there, up front. This line, seen in the hobby, has a lot more black, um, a lot more black than the other fish. Even though these guys are technically the same ESU, <laughs> you can see that 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 black coloration is uh, highly variable. And as you guys know, I love the history of this, uh, this group of fish. The name Scipio was actually coined by um, Seth Eugene Meek when he was working at Chicago's very own Field Museum back in 1902. These are just absolutely beautiful. I love them. These fish have been a pleasure to own. I have brought these to both the Chicago Library Society and the ALA, as well as shared them with a number of people. But right now I'm just in colony building mode. So let's see if we can get this tank filled again. This is the Sayula Scythia, undescribed species, some males, by some considered to actually be a different ESU of the Francese, but that is not confirmed, as this species actually went extinct in the wild, or this location was extirpated before they could actually be completely studied. Hopefully this colony does well. We have a lot more fish before too long. That female does appear pregnant, but fairly early stages. So fingers crossed. Over here, is a colony of young Scythia lermae. The location on these is the Lago de Zacapu. Common name for them is the Olive Scythia. A 
Adults will get up to about two and a half inches, so a little bit smaller than the multipunctata. All of these fish have a fairly similar body type, and you'll see them specifically. The one type feature amongst the Scythia is the, the notched dorsal fin that you see on the males. There, you can see a little bit of the notch. This fish was described by Seth Eugene Meek back in uh, 1902. He was actually down in Mexico at the time uh, where he was working on compiling the first book on Mexican fish. So it's pretty cool, and I know I've mentioned it before in other videos, it's pretty cool to have that link to the Chicagoland area with what happened to be some of my favorite fish. You can see the spotting on this female right here. And these fish are still young. I received them from my friend Chris Neal of the Freshwater Fish Preservation Aquarist team um, back shortly before the ALA convention in May. And they're growing out really nicely. And I couldn't be happier. I have a small group of eight. And hopefully as they mature, we get a number of fry. Wonderful. All right, and last but not least, Scythia francese. This species was originally found back in 1976. These are de uh, descended from the original collection by, uh, by Dolores Kingston. When they went back in 1978, the fish was already extinct. They couldn't find any of them. And then the fish was thought to be totally extinct until it was rediscovered in a handful of tanks maintained by hobbyists. These fish that I have are mostly descended from uh, fish that I received from John Lyons, or via John Lyons. He was pretty renowned, in my opinion, uh, for his work with Gideots, and actually has a species named after him, which we talked about in a previous video when he actually came and visited, which is still totally wild that that happened. The Scythia are primarily herbivorous, so I definitely stick with more of like a spirulina flake, although I do supplement with the bug bites. This female is nice and pregnant. And I love that there's babies in here. It makes me so happy when I walk around and check on the tanks and see baby fish. Absolutely beautiful. And again, you can see the dorsal fin has the notch. Pretty typical for the Scythia. Uh, a little bit of cording. Beautiful. Love it. With all these fish, if you are able to obtain them, I hope you do pick them up and breed them and try and build your own colonies. Because uh, the one thing that's pretty typical for most of these, like we looked at the Lago de Kamequara location, those are extirpated. This fish is extinct in the wild, although they are hoping to reintroduce it in the same place where they reintroduced the Zoogeneticus tequila. All these are Keras fish except for the, uh, the Sayula Scythia, because it's an undescribed species. So, like I said, if you are able to obtain them, I hope you do, and keep them healthy, keep them well fed. I feed most of my fish approximately twice a day. In addition to whatever it is that they eat when they're in the tank. These are incredible. If you guys like what I'm doing, I hope you hit like and subscribe. I'll be sure to post more updates in the future.